My name is Dr. Masood Kandakar, and I will be presenting uh, a paper we will have published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled Pericardiectomy versus Medical Management in Chronic Relapsing Pericarditis. So the clinical question that I would like to address with everyone today is we know that a lot of patients have acute pericarditis. Approximately one-fourth of these patients go on to have relapsing pericarditis or essentially recurrent events. Now most of these events will resolve with time, but for a subset of these patients, uh, these events of relapsing pericarditis continue to occur, and this can have a significant impact on their quality of life. So physicians <coughs> have had an armamentarium of medical management that they've used to treat relapsing pericarditis, and this has included NSAIDs, corticosteroids, and colchicine. However, there are certain patients that continue to be refractory to medical management, and for these patients, further management at this time is unknown. And part of the reason why is because there haven't been studies on what to do next. One of the options that have been considered is surgical pericardiectomy. However, there is a, a perceived significant risk with this surgical procedure. The, so the question we want to address is, one, is pericardiectomy safe for patients with chronic relapsing pericarditis? And the second, is pericardiectomy effective compared to conventional uh, medical management in relapsing pericarditis? So we performed a retrospective analysis from 1994 to 2005 and took uh, 184 patients. Of these 184 patients, 58 patients had a pericardiectomy and 126 patients continued with medical management from their index visit at the Mayo Clinic. All of these patients had to have a definite diagnosis of relapsing pericarditis. Patients were followed for a mean of five and a half years and our outcomes included perioperative morbidity and mortality in the patients who underwent surgical pericardiectomy and then we compared uh, the following outcomes, uh, time to relapse, relapse rate, medication use, and follow-up. So the two groups were fairly comparable um, with respect to age in general. Patients with chronic relapsing pericarditis are a little bit younger, um, but the surgical patients were a little sicker than the patients who continued with medical management. But despite being sicker at the index visit, when we looked at outcomes with regards to relapse rate, there was a significant decrease in the relapse rate in the patients who underwent pericardiectomy. With regards to all-cause death and fall for the two groups, there was essentially no difference. With regards to medication use and follow-up, in fact what we saw was that both groups had a significant decrease in medication use and follow-up. While it was not significant, there was a trend towards decreased medication use in the pericardiectomy group. So why are these results important? Well, the first thing is that we don't actually have any AHA, ACC guidelines on what to do with patients who have uh, relapsing pericarditis. There is a paucity of data. In fact, there are no studies on comparing pericardiectomy versus medical management in relapsing pericarditis. The second important issue <clears throat> is that many clinicians perceive pericardiectomy as a high-risk surgical procedure. For patients who have constrictive pericarditis, there is significant morbidity. Patients who have chronic relapsing pericarditis tend to have fewer comorbidities, are younger in age. So in fact, our data actually suggests that pericardiectomy is a safe procedure to perform. Their relapse rate decreases compared to the medically managed group. Only 30% of patients had a relapse. So the natural course of the disease is many of these patients will uh, recover over time. That being said, there's still a small group of patients that continue to have significant relapses. Another study limitation, of course, is that it's a retrospective study. And an additional study limitation is at the time we were collecting these patients, uh, medical management for relapsing pericarditis was not known. There are some significant trials on colchicine that show that this was beneficial. However, in our 
group of patients, both in the medically managed group and the surgical pericardiectomy group, these patients were not optimized on colchicine. A lot of these patients had were on steroids, and subsequent studies have shown that steroids have been associated with relapse. So it is possible that if patients are optimally managed on uh, medical therapy, their recovery rate will be better. So what would we recommend? The first line option for chronic relapsing pericarditis should still be medical management, and it should, this should include an initial trial with NSAIDs and colchicine. If this fails, a trial with corticosteroids should be attempted with a slow taper. Now, if this fails, there are two options. Patients can continue with medical management, but the clinician should also offer uh, the possibility of a pericardiectomy. However, we would recommend that this be considered at a center that performs high volume pericardiectomies. So it should be a center of surgical excellence. So in conclusion from our study, uh, surgical pericardiectomy is a safe, effective treatment for chronic relapsing pericarditis. And we hope that in the future, surgical pericardiectomy will be able to treat those subset of patients who have persistent chronic relapsing pericarditis that is refractory to medical management. I thank you very much for your time. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.